We are live now. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting of the uh, MHAC Advisory Committee to order on Wednesday, May the 11th, 2022 at 1 p.m. I'd like to have a motion to approve the agenda. Circulate it, please. So moved. Yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor Little. And seconded by Member Matthews. Thank you. Uh, is there any declaration of pecuniary interest? Pauline? Yes. Uh, sorry, I should call you Chair Boer. Um, it, we actually have to ask if there's any questions or, or any amendments to the agenda or any discussion points. Oh, right. And then we do a vote um, once, once everything's been discussed. Are there any additions to the agenda that won't be covered under members' privilege at the end? <laughs> uh, there being none, uh, could I have a show of hands to approve the agenda as circulated, please? Thank you. And now does anybody have a declaration of pecuniary interest? Okay, I'm receiving lots of negative, so no declarations of pecuniary interest. And adoption of minutes from the meeting of February the 9th, 2022. Everybody's had a chance to review them. I was not able to attend that meeting, so I can't uh, have an opinion one way or the other whether the minutes are accurate. So are there any errors or omissions to those minutes of February 9th, 2022? Don't we have to move that we accept them and then discuss that? Oh, move first and then discuss? Okay, sure. I, I move that we accept the minutes as uh, distributed. Uh, thank you, Member Matthews. Seconder? Yes. Seconded by Member Ferguson. Thank you so much. Are there any errors or omissions to the circulated minutes from February the 9th? It's not errors, but when we get to my report, there's follow up on many of the issues that we discussed in February for information. That's kind community. of under business arising in my mind, but uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, there being a motion on the floor to accept the minutes of February the 9th, could I have a show of hands that everyone approves the minutes? Thank you so much. Minutes of February the 9th, 2022 are hereby approved. And subcommittee minutes. Uh, the motion that the committee received the subcommittee minutes from the museum board from January and March, and the minutes of Heritage Gray Highlands from May the 11th. Could I have a motion to accept those minutes for information, please? Thank you, I, have a, I, have a, I have a question because those are two separate things. Should we do the museum? minutes first and the Heritage Bay Highlands second or not? Given that we're accepting Question just for information. Coordinator mm -hmm. Van Alstein. Oh, okay. So they're just for information. Okay. I yes, don't know. I, yeah. Okay. okay. So I Council can... Little has moved that we accept the uh, minutes from the museum board as noted and the minutes from Heritage Bay Highlands for information. Can I have a seconder, please? Second. Seconded by Member Ferguson. Thank you very much. And any discussion? I got a couple of things. <laughs> um, in your museum, and this is just a question. In the sure. museum minutes, um, there is, in one of the museum minutes, they, they're inviting uh, or Emmett to join the board of the museum. That was this in is, January, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's great. I'm, you know, he, he's a good guy. I'm glad you're going to you know, put him to more work than he gets doing this four times a year. I only have one question because when this committee was first formed, and, and Amanda might have to speak to this, there was a little bit of a kerfuffle that only two people from each committee could be on MHAC. And I don't, I, I, I would hate to see us lose Emmett because he joined the museum board. I but would I, put that over to the uh, yeah. coordinator. And, <laughs> and, but as I think about it now, uh, I think it's okay because 
um, Stewart is on both committees, so he could be on for HGH and Emmett could be on for, for the museum. That would sort of be okay. I was just worried that there, that, that could create uh, something that is opposed to the um, guidelines for the committee. Amanda, do you have any advice for us on that? Uh, Chair, I was actually just looking up our terms of reference to see what it states. I don't have it off the top of my head. So if you can bear with me for a moment, I can let you know. Absolutely. If it helps <laughs> allay anyone's uh, concerns, I, I would consider my membership on this committee to be not necessarily attached to my role at uh, the museum, given that uh, I'm relatively new to both roles and just sort of learning things as I go. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm happy to just continue participating here without ostensible or formal attachment to the museum, as it were. Appreciate that, Emma. Thank you. We'll just give Amanda a couple more minutes to look up what the official status is. Yes, Amanda. So under the composition, uh, on the terms of reference, it says two members of Grey Highlands Council and up to eight citizen appointees appointed by council resolution for the term of council, where at all possible, at least two of the citizen appointees shall be knowledgeable in current matters related to HGH and at least two members be chosen with strong ties to the South Grey Museum. So it's saying where at all possible and that it's hopeful that they have ties to each of those boards, but it's not necessarily. Okay, the clarification was important because I thought it said only two members of each, but it says at least so we could have more. So that's fine. So there you go. Welcome <laughs> to the museum board. I, I guess Colleen better say that, not me, because it's not my board. <laughs> no, we're all, that means we're all legal. Thank you for looking it up for us, Amanda. Appreciate okay. that. And um, the other thing, okay, if, I, if that's okay, the question that I had up for my report uh, about um, the one thing that didn't go into the um, the things that need motions, I, there's there's the the status of the uh, committee for the um, ongoing period because our last meeting is in August and we won't meet for six months. And I just had that question in there, Amanda, that you could clarify: Will all of the members of MHAC? this committee need to reapply to the new council at such time as that is open for business. Um, and do we, as a Colleen and I, as a committee, will we need to resubmit the names of the people that are on our subcommittee, well, the museum board and NHGH um, in, in the way we have in the past for approval? Yes, Amanda. Um, through you, Chair. Yes, all members of MHAC will have to resubmit um, upon the new uh, term of council. When exactly those applications are going to be um, sent out and accepted, I don't have the exact dates for that now. But as the committee coordinator, I will be reaching out to every member of our current committees um, when that time comes. Um, and I'm sorry, the second question was whether we as a subcommittee also resubmit the names. I'm assuming we would. I would think to keep the record straight that we will do that at the same time. We'll probably just receive them as part of the first MHAC meeting. Okay. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. And, and just, um, and it is in there and it was in the minutes of the last one. It is understood that sometimes heritage things can't wait six months. And it was understood that I will be allowed to go directly to that. Colleen's got a little different thing because Peter is a municipal employee, so he has access to what he needs, whereas HGH doesn't. So if, 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 if there is something that turns into a bit of a crisis for a property owner or a heritage property, then I can take that directly to council as a delegation of, upon request. Okay, I can live with that. <laughs> Okay, that sounds uh, good. Nancy's questions have been answered. Uh, we're on to item number six, heritage designation for tax incentives. I have a vote on Chair. the item is in order. Hmm? I believe a vote on the item is in order. Yeah, we have to accept those three. <laughs> we, 
we were talking about an order yeah, on the. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, the uh, questions that Nancy has asked have been answered by Coordinator Van Alstein. Uh, I guess, are there any further questions? <laughs> So we need a motion to accept the clarifications that Councillor Van Alstein has given us. Can you motion, Amanda, or Councillor Little? Yeah. Um, Chair Boer, actually, you, are, you have a motion on the floor to accept the subcommittee minutes. It's been moved um, by Councillor Little and seconded by Member Ferguson. All we need is the vote now. So we just need to know who's all in favor. Oh, just, oh, so the questions don't. They, they were ask. part of the discussion. Right. Okay. So, and, and I guess I, just just to clarify the way this works, I think if one of the questions had sparked something that needed to be changed, then the motion would be amended. But it didn't. You know, we just got our questions answered and we're all set. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. So the motion being that we accept the minutes from the subcommittees of the Museum Board and the Heritage Great Highlands for the period noted on the agenda moved by Councillor Little and seconded by Member, Member Ferguson, that I have a vote of acceptance for this, please. <laughs> Thank you so very much, everyone. Now moving on to item number six, uh, heritage designation tax incentives. Uh, so I think probably uh, it's appropriate that I should move that the Museum and Heritage Advisory Committee request council to direct staff to protect to provide a report on heritage designation tax incentive program options for council consideration. Right. And attached, attached to that are a couple of examples of these types of programs in other municipalities. Um, and I just wanted to make a couple of comments about this issue. I know Kathy, when we were in um, Niagara on the Lake for the heritage conference, there was a lot of talk about these designate, um, about the incentive programs. There's two types available and the re and we talked about this, we've been talking about this at, M at, at, at HGH for the last like, I don't know, six or eight years. I know even Paul was talking about it. Our problem up, and, up until now has been that with the tax incentive program, one third of the refund has to come from Gray County and they were never willing to support that concept. But as of two weeks ago, and thank you, Mayor McQueen for letting me know, Owen Sound reapplied to have that support and they were granted it. So if we now, it looks a lot more promising if we did have a tax incentive program uh, that it, it would be much more attractive because the way it works, Let's just say, I know it's not exact, but let's just say each of the three people, uh, each of the three parties get one third. If I pay, say I pay $2,100 in taxes, it's a lot more than that at Lake Eugenia, but let's just say it's $2,100. 700 of that goes to Gray Highlands, 700 of it goes to Gray County, and 700 of it goes to the provincial education system. But if Gray County didn't pay Re reimburse a percentage of their 700, then the, the, the credit wasn't as good. Um, the only, the, and the reason I'm suggesting they look into both types is kind of important. When we were in Niagara on, on the lake and attended sessions on this, for a property owner, the, um, most property owners pay what? Two, $3,000 in tax, uh, generally, you know, in, in municipal taxes, depending on the property. So if you if you were paying two thousand dollars and you got twenty percent back, it's four hundred dollars. It's not really going to accomplish very much if you're trying to put a repair eaves troughs on a heritage building or put on new gingerbread. Those the heritage tax incentives work really well for industrial properties like with some of the stuff downtown and i don't know what the tax would be but where you've got rental property you've got storefronts all that kind of stuff for those buildings if they get if they do a, a project over two or three years of, these these programs are set up like they're 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 viable you, you can't it can't be do it yourself or anything like that but what they what they suggest for homeowners is that they can apply for a grant um, 
that might be over two or three years. So say they did um, a perfect job would be Paul uh, Allen's gingerbread replacement. That's a beautiful heritage example of a heritage restoration that 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 it really improves the value of a heritage building. Well, say that was going to cost him two thousand uh, dollars. He could apply and there. The, the program would have an agreement that maybe he would get half of that paid returned to him by the municipality once that work was properly accomplished. So that's much more attractive to a homeowner of a smaller heritage property. And, and it's only, it, it, it's not an ongoing grant, but it's in the case of getting, um, making improvements or renovations um, consistent with the value. And it's only for designated properties. So both of these things are real incentives for people to designate in. And right now we need that incentive because they're saying, no, 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 no. There's nothing in it for me. Why would I do that? So the- Your motion yeah. asks uh, council to direct staff to prepare a report on those yeah. two alternatives yeah. for people that yeah. own their homes. Yeah, and so you're and I, just, I just kind of, yeah, and I, Basically, that's the motion, but I kind of wanted this committee to understand what, what the background, you know, why this is so important. And I hope that when it does come to council, that I know that both Councillor McQueen and Councillor Little have long been in favor of this being an idea. If we get it started now, then I'm, I'm assuming, and, and Paul, you'd be the best one to answer this, I'm assuming that this would be an issue for the budget for next year for the new council to consider um, for, for next year's budget. But if we get the motions going now, then that'll be available for consideration for the 2023 budget. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Nancy. So the motion is that uh, AMHAC committee requests council to direct staff to prepare a report on the tax incentive program options. So moved by member Matthews, seconded by Oh, do we have a second for that? We have a seconder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. And we've had some discussion. Does everybody understand what's being proposed? We have a question, Councillor Little. I have a comment, but I'll, but I'll let Mayor McQueen go first. Okay. Yeah, I was hesitating seconding it just to have a member from our committee versus a council member support it. That's why. I, that's okay. It's 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 it goes forward anyway. Um, so a few things. Yeah. So I'm just trying to do the math, and I think something. That triggers if the county supports it, then it automatically also includes the school board portion of that. There's there's a there's a trigger there, right? And I and I don't know the exact number, but say say municipally we're 43%, say the county's at 32%, and the school board was 25. I, I I'm just guessing that that's somewhere in the range. I, I don't know which. And you're absolutely right, uh, Madam Chair, that certainly part of that re report. Uh, would need to certainly be in consideration uh, of, of some kind of, of fund set aside from budget that would, if people apply or however that works, that there needs to be some money set aside. And, and you know, I think there's ways of developing a, a, re a reserve, whether it's through surpluses of, of certain things or whatever, there's ways of building a reserve. So then you always have a reserve there for people to, to fund that. But even saying that, 43% is the local level. And, and so uh, say 57 is the two other levels. That's still, that's, that's a pretty, I think it's a pretty good incentive as, as member Matthews is, is, is saying. And then, you know, and that may build on people realizing that, hey, there is value in heritage properties, not only for the heritage itself, but hey, incentive wise, uh, you know, and, and we, you know, at one time there used to be incentives for heritage properties, but you know, they've always, they've dwindled away. So I think this is a really good opportunity to look at that. I'm um, trying to think if it was somewhere around 2010, no, 12, somewhere there, I remember raising it along with the city of Own Sound at the County of Gray, and we sort of hit that wall pretty hard. And then all of a sudden it's on the agenda. I'm like, and I, I think I text uh, member Matthews. I'm going, you won't believe this, but, and it's on there. And then when I asked a couple of questions, yeah, yeah, it just went, and I'm like, holy gosh, somebody, anyway, it was great to see that. And, and so the, so the, you know, it's been, it's been tracked through and, and another municipality is doing it. And, and I know that, uh, has done it and we know Owen Sound is, is very, uh, 
very supportive of their heritage properties, always have been for quite a long time, along with having a heritage okay. committee and, and that sort of thing. So uh, about, that's about all I have to add, but certainly I think this is uh, a small incentive to, to make some big gains and a lot of uh, heritage uh, designations. So and, and further, further, to what Paul, further to what Paul is saying, I'm sort of, because from my position on the CHO board, I'm reaching out to Southgate I reached out to Hanover and I'm sort of trying to build, I think Southgate needs a heritage committee and I've been talking to people in Southgate and part of my role in CHO might be to help them get that up and running, which I would be more than happy to do for a next door neighbor. And then that gives us even more impetus uh, in, at, at Gray County. The other thing that I was gonna say, the grant program, and this would be also for, if they didn't want to start a heritage grant program right away, one of my suggestions was, you have the Main Street Improvement Incentive for commercial buildings. What if improvement, facade improvements to heritage houses, designated heritage houses, was added as being eligible for that because then you don't need a whole separate thing. You've already got money there doing that. And, you know, some of the houses like Hickling House that's right on the main street, that would be awesome, you know. Okay. Anyway, see, I, I just, I think staff has lots of options to explore here. Yeah. I think we'll wait yeah. until they uh, have an opportunity to take those suggestions that have been made and then come back to council with some recommendations. But I do like that last one. If there's already money set aside for commercial improvements, perhaps heritage housing improvements could be folded in. Anyway, we'll see what the staff report reads. And obviously bureaucracy takes a while as Mayor McQueen was saying that uh, all of a sudden it's on the uh, county agenda and it just kind of slid through. So hopefully uh, the staff report will be forthcoming and then we will be able to move forward with this uh, suggestion. So just, just to add to that, Madam Chair, just to finish off, it, it's probably something that would be good to follow up with um, own sound heritage or own sound, you know, for the staff as well to follow up the process that they did, because obviously they followed a process and, and, and if, there, if there's no need to invent the wheel, they probably that's already- what I would expect is that yeah. uh, they would reach out to municipalities that have already implemented this kind of programming and to see what the ramifications are and that sort of thing. Councillor Little, your turn. Thank you, Chair. Um, just with respect to the tax refunds, uh, the bylaw that was on the agenda for the county actually references the City of Owen Sound's uh, bylaw that um, I think, you know, Nancy, you've included Kingston and Perth, I believe. Uh, but since the county was reacting or responding to the City of Owen Sound, it might be worthwhile to actually take a look at their bylaw. Uh, which is, I'll tell you what the number is. Um, sorry, I had it right here. Um, bylaw number 2009-148 was dated September 14th, 2009. Um, and so it, it might be a good idea to reference that as well or for staff to reference that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Little. Yeah, so can we can we request uh, I know Michelle has said can we request that Amanda add that bylaw to the attachments for the minutes that are going to go to um, council with this motion? Thank you, Councillor Van Alstein or sorry, Coordinator Van Alstein, are you able to add the own sound bylaw to the uh, minutes that are going to go forward to council? I have added a note with the bylaw number on it. If we want to add the bylaw, we will have to actually move a motion adding that to the agenda. Okay, uh, Director, so Harris. It, Director Harris. Thank you, um, Chair Bohr. I just wanted to let you know, actually, I, I don't think this is gonna be hugely complicated. This can be done through the Community Improvement Plan. Um, we have that language and that information. When we introduced our Community Pro Improvement Plan in 2019, we didn't add heritage property tax relief at the time because we wanted to focus on a few other things, but council has directed us to come back with some recommendations for updates to the Community Improvement Plan plan for the 2023 and there is we had been drafted um in consultation with county a heritage property tax relief credit to provide heritage property tax relief for historic properties which are privately owned following re restoration 
20% um, of the municipal, county, and education portion, um, one-time payment renewable for up to 10 years. So I don't think it's going to be very complex, and it can be done as part of our CIP updates and, and put forward for council consideration at that time. And obviously, if this committee moves a recommendation, that would um, clearly provide some further support for that direction. Thank you, Director Harris. It sounds like some of the homework has already been done, which is wonderful. One more comment there, Ma Member Matt. Yeah, just um, for, for, for the attention of uh, Director Harris, if you're going to reference heritage properties, you need to put the word designated in there uh, because we have lots of other properties that are just listed and they have no compunctions or restrictions on them. Okay, um, thank you very much. So I think they. Thank you, Mem okay. Member Matthews. In the eligibility, it talks about build buildings must be on land that is designated under Section 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act. Perfect. Sounds Perfect. like it's been made very clear. This is wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to be happy this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> the How long have I been fighting for this? Ten years I've been fighting for this. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we're, you're, we as the committee are uh, asking... Uh, council to direct staff to provide a report on heritage designated designation tax incentive program options. Uh, motion by member Matthews and seconded by Councillor Little. We've had lots of discussions. Uh, could we have a motion of support please or a vote of support? Mm -hmm. Thank you, it's unanimous. Thank you so much everyone. And, and, and Colleen, before you go on, may I make a motion that the um, a link to the Owen Sound uh, ta uh, tax grant program, whatever it's called, be added uh, to these minutes for consideration by council and staff. Just, and Amanda said we had to do something like that. <laughs> Make a motion to get that added. Yes, Paul. I'll second that. Thank you very much, Mayor McQueen that we add the uh, proviso that the Owen Sound bylaw 2009-148 be added to the information forwarded to council. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, got to vote on that. Yes, we got to vote on that. Oh, we have to vote on the second one. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> I so we, yes. <laughs> we had an amendment to the uh, 6.1 that we Whatever. have found by law and it's been seconded. Could I have a show of approval for that addition of the Owen Sound bylaw? Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Nothing like being uh, completely legal. <laughs> Moving on to 6.2. Uh, MHAC receives uh, for information, the Beavercrest Public School Euphrasia listing for information. And da -da 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 that we recommend council approve listing Beavercrest Public School Euphrasia as a heritage property. So moved by Heritage Gray Highlands member Matthews. Yes, seconder. Uh, Mayor McQueen, thank you. Just, just uh, the note on that is we as, a, as MHAC are, are going to approve approved that this be added, but it will not actually be added for a while. Um, I have a lot more research. These all came up in the last two weeks and I did, there was no way I had time to, to get all of the research done and all of the proper documentation from the owners and stuff. So this will be an ongoing project. And, um, and once the documentation is then, I guess I just, I, I, I Mandy, you can clarify this. Once I do a documentation, I just, I'll let you know, and then it gets added to the next council agenda for approval, and then it goes on. Is that how it works? Once the listing page is completed, then this recommendation, along with um, the listing page, will go to council for approval. But the rest or of the minutes consideration. Of the but the rest of the minutes of this meeting will go to council, right? Now, you're not going to hold them until those three things are done, because that would be a disaster. <laughs> no, I won't hold them until these are done. I will send them to council as soon as possible. Okay. And then as, yeah, but as, okay. So then as these come in, then they go separately 
as they come in. Okay. Let's try to figure out what my role is. <laughs> uh, is it, uh, yes, Councillor Little. Thank you, um, Chair Boer. Um, just, just clarity, and, I, and I'm sure I know the answer to this, uh, to, um, to Nancy. Um, it sounds like these four may have come up as a result of the home show. Um, I guess the process would be that someone approaches you or you approach someone, but in any case, these four properties all have um, property owner permission or interest to, to proceed. Um, in in the, the first one I'm going to do because it has it's a matter for the uh, there's, there's three properties and I've, I've, I've lost the the Hill Street in Flesherton and Beaverdale Public School approached me both of them approached me at the heritage meeting they yes I want to be on the thing uh, Hill Street is thinking even designation I I said well we will be, get we will get in contact and I, I, I made a bit of a glitch. I should have taken their information. I gave them my card and said, send me an email and we'll chat. And they haven't gotten around to that yet, but I can knock on doors and I will do that. And I will make sure that I have written approval for those. And that's why it's being phrased this way. I don't want it to have to wait three months until if, if next week I talk to them and say, oh yeah, go for it. And then I tell them it's going to be five months before it gets on the register. I, I don't want to do that. So, you know, I like to be a little more timely. So that's why that's the third property that we're going to discuss. I'm going to clear this now. Stevens Farmhouse, I do have written permission and um, it's quite important because of being on the Niagara Scarpment land. We need to protect it so that they won't make him tear it down when he builds his bigger home. And this, as, in, as it says in there, there's lots of precedent for that because it's exactly the same situation as Sykes um, Cottage was. Anyway, it looks like Emmett, had, does Emmett have a, over to it through. Chairman Boer, it looks like Emmett had a question. <laughs> he had his hand up, but Emmett I did, did yeah. a question. Uh, I was sort of wondering. I think I think it, it seems like the my my question has been more or less answered, given that it seems like the uh, intent of these is to get or, or provide Member Matthews with uh, the necessaries to proceed in the interim while we're maybe not meeting as regularly. So that's great. Uh, it was just that um, it, it seemed to present the motions in a way that was like assuming more or less that these things would all happen in the way that we're anticipating. <laughs> and so just wondering what would happen if, you know, commencing with the research and listing, there were some unforeseen uh, complication that would mean that maybe we wouldn't want to actually endorse uh, the inclusion of these is in the that, register. But it, it sounds like Member Matthews is quite confident that uh, they all sort well, of if, have if that have, I, I've been doing this. If you've looked at the register, every one of those properties I vetted, uh, well, there were a few that I inherited, but most of the stuff that's on the register has been there since I've been doing this. And I'm very careful and I make sure we have the member and the, the um, permission, which technically is not required, except uh, you have to send it out right after you do it and they're allowed to object so why wouldn't you just get the permission in the first place to save any of that red tape if there's anything that that seems hinky i will notify um hgh via our next meeting that that one fell through and i'll make sure amanda knows that it fell through and she can remove it from the list of things we're trying to do great thank you thank you very much uh amanda i'm through you chair if for some reason that it one of these does fall through, it will have to come back to this committee and we will have to remove our recommendation that we have on the floor right now. Okay. I will keep you advised if that happens. How's that? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Amanda, do we need a separate uh, motion for 6.2, 6.3 and 6.4? Can they all be done under one? Uh, through you, Chair, they need to be done separately because uh, they may not here. all go... To Can you hear me now? I can. Sorry, my apologies. Um, they need to be separate motions because they may not all go to council at the same time. Okay, thank you. So currently, do, six point two. We need to read. Do we need to read them all out again? Because they all say basically. Can we just say accept uh, six twenty two as written in the agenda? Is that okay? Can we do that? Yes. 
it is the will of the committee on how they wish to proceed. Um, generally, if you're moving or seconding a motion, it should kind of be said so that everybody's on the same page, but I can also read it out too if, um, if that's necessary. Well, I have the printed, uh, uh, what do you call it, motion here in my hand. So I'll read out the first one that the Museum and Heritage Advisory Committee received the Beaverdale Public School Euphrasia listing for information. And that once the research and listing page has been completed by Heritage Gray Highlands, the Museum and Heritage Advisory Committee recommends the council approve listing the Beavercrest Public School Euphrasia as a heritage property under section okay. uh, four of the Ontario Heritage Act and add to the online municipal register. So moved by member Matthews and at this point seconded by Mayor McQueen. Aye. In favor. Go ahead, Elizabeth. I was going to uh, move to second that, the Beaverdale. The Beaverdale one, okay. I, it's already seconded by Mayor McQueen, but he'll acquiesce to your request. Second. That's okay. If, if she wishes to do that, I can allow her to do that. That's okay. That's great. Thank you so much, Mayor McQueen. So we have a motion moved and seconded, and we've had plenty of discussion. Could I have a show of hands for approval of uh, motion number 6.2? Uh, approved as shown. Thank you, everyone. Uh, 6.3, uh, that the Museum and Heritage Mayor Committee receive. Mayor Bourne, Mayor yes. Bourne? have we lost um, Nancy? I don't see her. Oh. I am. It does look like she has, well, left the meeting, but more than likely it's uh, computer issues. So if we could give her a moment to return. Certainly. And we're just waiting. Thanks for the water. Chair Boer, I don't see her connecting again and I haven't received uh, any response yet. So we still have quorum if we want to proceed with the next, um, with the agenda and she can join back in whenever she is able. Thank you very much, uh, Coordinator Van uh, I'll read out 6.3. Uh, Member Matthews has already uh, been very clear in her explanation of these three uh, portions of uh, item number six. So we'll proceed that the Museum and Heritage Advisory Committee receives 30 Hill Street Flesherton listing for information. And again, once the research and listing page has been completed by Heritage Gray Highlands, the Museum and Heritage Advisory Committee recommends that council approve listing 30 Hill Street Flesherton as a heritage property under section four of the Ontario Heritage Act and add it to the online municipal register. But I have a mover for that motion, please. Moved by Member Ferguson. Thank you. Seconder? I'll second it. Thank you, Elizabeth. And we've had plenty of discussion so far. Are there any further questions? Uh, all right, a show of hands of support for the motion, please. Any opposed? Thank you. So 6.3 has passed. Thank you. And uh, item number 6.4. Uh, that the Museum and Heritage Advisory Committee received the Stevens Farmhouse 607260 Side Road 13B Clarksburg listing for information and that once the research and listing page has been completed by Heritage Gray Highlands, the Museum and Heritage Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve listing 
the Stevens Farmhouse, 607260 Side Road 13B, Clarksburg, as a heritage property under Section 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act and add it to the online municipal register. So moved. I had plenty of discussion, and Member Matthews was very forthcoming with information about this. Uh, could I have a motion, uh, someone to make the motion, please? Yes, so moved. Mayor McQueen, and a seconder, please. Thank you, Member Ferguson. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Thank I you. Do have a comment. I do have a comment to that. <clears throat> sure, go ahead, Mayor McQueen. So, this is something that I realized a number of years ago being a commission member that if a, a, a property or a, um, is designated heritage um, in the NEC plan, I mean, it's so unfortunate that sometimes people buy property in the NEC land, they tear down an old farmhouse to build something new. This allows the, to, uh, to protect that if they so desire to create a, a newer property, they can still preserve the original heritage home. And I, a perfect example, is, as Nancy has pointed out, is the Sykes Cottage, which is if you're driving through the Pretty River Valley, just past the Billy Reed Road on the left-hand side, it's it's... It uh, gives you an example of, of two properties. Uh, I mean, Gray County and Gray Highlands does allow secondary units now on property, but I just, I think it's so, so great that this is a, one of those opportunities that heritage homes are protected and the NEC plan does recognize that. So it's good if you know others that are, that are situations like that are going to be demolished or torn down that this is a tool that is at the disposal of the landowner if they so desire so okay thank you very much for bringing that forward mayor mcqueen yeah thank you um that brings us to item number seven uh called members privilege on our agenda uh councillor little sorry i was just trying to be helpful i thought we hadn't voted yet but i well, <laughs> we did vote so we did vote, yes <laughs> I have nothing to add, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Emmett, did you have, or Member Ferguson, did you have anything you'd like to bring forward in members' privilege? Nothing to Chair, thank you. Director Harris? Thank oh. you, nothing from me, Chair Bohr. Thank you. Uh, Member Norrington? Uh, yes, I would like to point out that the Beaverdale Public School in Euphrasia on the ninth line is featured in the winter 2022 on the bay magazine is quite a beautiful picture okay well that's something worthwhile to look up thank you very much for mentioning that member norrington and on a different note as chair i received a email from uh, robert pointer who had been a member of our MHAC committee. Uh, and he said uh, he wishes to resign his seat. He doesn't feel that he's made a significant contribution. His main interest has been in current culture and the role of the arts in Gray Highlands. And the third complicating factor is his computer and his Zoom have not been working very well due to frequent shutdowns. So I don't think he's had a very good time on Zoom. Sorry so, about that. Uh, welcome back, member. I don't I have no idea what happened. It was a it was a Microsoft problem. I just signed out of uh, I signed out of my email, signed back in, and here I am. Sorry about all that. Okay, <laughs> well, well, we're down to item number seven uh, on the agenda. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and I'm just mentioning that I received a, an email from uh, Robert Pointer, and he uh, is uh, resigning his seat on this committee. He doesn't feel he's made a significant contribution. His main interest, he says, has been current culture and the role of the arts in Gray Highlands. And the third complicating factor is exactly what has just happened to member Matthews. His computer and Zoom have not been working because of frequent shutdowns. So I emailed Mr. Pointer back and said, well, thank you for letting me know about his decision. We would be sorry to lose you since everyone interested in community vitality is welcomed on these committees. And it is always good to have varied discussions. And I said, perhaps our paths will cross again in a different area. So just to inform all the members, uh, Robert Pointer has uh, resigned from our committee uh, and we'll 
look for someone else to replace him if we have other candidates or we'll continue with the membership that we have. Madam Chair, can I make a comment for that? Go ahead. So um, it's too bad that he is just making that decision. It's his decision to make, but I would suggest that he does capture you know, paintings, some heritage properties out there uh, that I, I've seen that he has done. One is particularly an old farmhouse just near my my farm. You maybe have seen it. It's uh, it's the it's east of Rob Roy. It's an old dilapidated farmhouse that attracts a lot of interest. And uh, I know he. I've gone by and he's out there and he's painting away and and so. I, I think he has contributed in a different way and his way of, of capturing some of those uh, those scenes. And, and along with, I uh, was at the Home and Garden Show this past two weeks ago and you as well, Barbara Pierin has captured a lot of barns, you know, in her paintings as well. So, you know, there's interesting parts that, you know, that people don't think, but they are in a different way that they're capturing those snapshots of barns and especially barns and old homes and stuff like that, that, are captured in their art. And I think that's so amazing that, uh, you know, I know a barber had a quite a collage of, of paintings of barns in Grey Highlands and in Grey County and, and, and afar. So I don't know how we can address that. I really think that Mr. Pointer and others have captured it in different ways of, of their contribution to heritage and, and what they right. do in their painting. So I just make those comments. Thank you very much, Mayor McQueen and Member Matthews. I just, adding to Barbara's barns, I'm the one that bought four of them and they're being shipped to Ireland to be celebrated in the Irish countryside. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it was a very expensive home show for me. Um, yeah, I, I'm thinking in response to what Mary McQueen said, and there might be something that Director Harris would be interested at some point, it might be, I know we have the, roving artists weekend and stuff it might be really interesting to invite all of those local artists and that the municipality maybe we have an art we used to do this we used to have an art show like in the kinplex or in markdale but but ask them and we could have heritage there you know with showing the buildings and stuff and the museum committee like we did at the home show but an art show only we ask them it, for it to be of heritage buildings or heritage landscapes. Well, thank you for the suggestion, Member Matthews. Um, Director Harris will keep that in mind moving forward, but I don't think that's a- No, it's not our job. That committee to do that particular arranging of that show, but that's a great suggestion. That would be showcasing local artists and uh, heritage properties as well. Yes, Councillor Little. Thank you, Chair Barr. Um, just to add to um, Mayor McQueen's comments, I think it's unfortunate that we've lost someone, um, and it's not for just one reason. There's a, you know, there's a few reasons, but having interest in art and culture, uh, but but enough interest to want to join this committee. And I'm wondering if we maybe are a little bit too restrictive. If when we attract uh, someone who's interested maybe we can understand a little bit better why they were interested and how, how that interest in heritage connects to their own particular interests. Because I feel like we've almost lost an opportunity to maybe expand. I know the Heritage Committee you know, has pretty strict rules around it, but the, if we can get variety amongst um, our members, then perhaps there's uh, just more vibrancy, even to go the direction that you're suggesting, Nancy. It's just, um, I don't know if we're mandated to be as restrictive as we are, but I think when we attract people that we should um, maybe investigate what their strengths are and how they can augment what we're doing here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Little. Member Matthews? Um, what occurs to me when I'm talking to Kathy about that again, and it's sort of like Anna wants to go on the museum board for more education. Maybe I should approach Robert now and ask him if rather than be M hack, this is very oriented to political protocols, this committee, and it's, you know, dotting I's and crossing T's so that the municipal ass is covered, if you'll forgive my French. Um, 
maybe Robert would be better off on HGH. If he's out traveling around the country, he could be somebody that's finding heritage uh, properties for us. He could be people, his paintings could be part of what goes on the municipal register. If some of those things he's painted becomes registered, his painting could be reproduced with credit. There's all kinds of options for that. And maybe I think his interest might be in the old buildings and Maybe he just joined the wrong committee. So I'll reach out to him and see. I because I I like what you said, Kathy, and I um I love the paint and I love the old barns and stuff. We want to do a project on old barns. We could have something on the municipal website. You know, old barns for hire. <laughs> Thank you for your comments, Nancy. I did leave the door open, like I said to Robert in my email. Perhaps our paths will cross again in a different area. So. Uh, if you as Heritage Grey Highlands uh, would like to reach out to Robert and try and find a way where he feels he might mm -hmm. better fit or have a larger yeah. contribution, I think that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, we have our committee is 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 quite mixed in terms of their interest level. Uh, and you know, there's there's different. Some of them know about local histories. Some of them do know about architecture. Jessica, I'm bringing Jessica along about the Heritage Act and heritage architecture. But, you know, Ben on the committee does nothing but consult with owners on how to fix stuff. And, and that's very valuable to us. You know, so we need, we need a spectrum and Robert would probably be a good fit. I'll talk to him. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, Nancy. Mayor McQueen. So I'm just going to show you a painting of a barn that I received uh, when I was warden for 2020. The, the municipality bought me a little gift and they, they bought me a, a picture of a painted barn. Lovely. Now the artist on this one is Barbara Hudson, uh, but it was purchased by the municipality for a gift to me uh, as that. So I just use this as an example. I have to get it up on my wall behind me here, but uh, barns are something that do interest me, but I think it's something that does recognize barns that are, are sort of a time capsule and then once they're gone, they're gone, right? So I, I just have that uh, strong interest in that. I was asking Barbara what, what she would encourage me to paint my barn. I actually, we actually have three bank barns that uh, are always in need to repair and I hire um, Harvey, no, um, oh, I forget the guy's name now. Um, anyway, I, I, you always, there's always upkeep. You gotta continue to upkeep them in but it is nice what they do when they capture it in the painting because it's captured in that moment of time. So well, there's, a barn behind, there's a barn behind me, but I brought it back from Vancouver. I, I, I ran into that artist in Stanley Park and grabbed his barn. <laughs> there's definitely a place for arts and culture within Grey Highlands. There's no question there. So if anyone has nothing or does anyone have anything further to bring forward under members privilege? The only, there's, there's, there's one thing and I just, this doesn't necessarily need to go any further than here right now, but one, one of the things that may be upcoming, and again, from the home show, I had a fairly serious talk with a couple of people that are on the Ansley Church um, Committee, and I gather that they're one of the heritage churches that are struggling with paying their expenses, dwindling con congregation, and so forth. And um, it, it may be that uh, Herod, I'm going to interact with them hopefully sometime soon, but it occurs to me that that would be an amazing arts and culture venue for performances because the acoustics in there are fabulous. There have been shows, choirs, um, it would be good for you know, a lot of different small, small musical groups, um, fairly contained plays even could be staged in there because there's a lot of room at the front and it's a, uh, a an auditorium with raised seating. Uh, and it might be something that I, I know that the municipality wouldn't want to buy the building, but it might be something that they would be able to in the future um, support with some funding. Uh, they would need to hire somebody to run it and stuff. Anyway, I just wanted everybody to know that that's, that's a possibility that's on the table and that, that that is a really important building to the community. And we don't have anything like a decent performance venue. You know, Paul, you were at the front for that Johnny Harris show. I was in the second last row and I could only hear half of what he said because the acoustics in there are so terrible. So anyway. Uh, thank I, you. I thank you very much, Member Matthews. Good suggestion. 
Um, if there's no further uh, items to be brought forward under member privilege, item number eight is our next meeting. And I, Emma has I, I, and, uh, I did just have a response and, to, sorry, to member Matthews there. As, as it happens last year, I, uh, I did a project looking at the feasibility of municipal owned or co-operated uh, performance sort of enterprise within the Grace Tipling Hall uh, in Shelburne because uh, they have a 200 seat theater there which has been mostly unused for the, the last several years. And so I worked with um, them on uh, trying to understand what might work and uh, doing a review of small uh, municipal theaters across Ontario. Um, so I could uh, make a connection there with um, the person I was working with to see if a copy of that might be of help uh, in investigating potential performance space uh, collaborations with the municipality uh, in Prehams. Okay, information brought forward is always good, Emma. Thank you. If, if you're interested, Emma, when I do get back into connection with this person, how about I join you in on the discussion because okay. you have that. I don't know, you know much about running a theater. When I was in the drama club, I was on stage, not behind the scenes. So what do I know? <laughs> anyway, yep. um, but, but I, I would love to involve you in that because you have expertise that they desperately need. And maybe you have helped develop a plan that could be put into place here. Balance. Cross connections are always uh, always informative and good. Thank you very much. So <laughs> our next meeting is scheduled on according to the agenda for uh, August the 10th at 1 p.m. on Zoom. Does that date work for everybody? I haven't even looked at my July calendar yet, so I'm thinking August is pretty clear. So August the 10th at one o'clock on Zoom. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, motion to adjourn, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Ferguson. And it's second, unanimous. It's <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> Thank you for your assistance, uh, Coordinator Van Alstein. Uh, nice to see you. Nice to hear you. We'll catch up with everyone on August the 10th. Bye now. Perfect time, Chair. Bye. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>